In a violent country like South Africa, the dire shortage of black psychologists in the health sector is a cause for major concern. Question is, how do we respond to treating and responding to a population that has a majority of black and poor citizens? Joining me in studio for that discussion is psychologist Josi Gianni. Uh, Josi, thank you very, very much for your time and welcome to Newsroom Africa. Great, thank you. So I guess we should start by uh, trying to reflect on what I think is what the credibility of psychologists hinges on, and that's the ability for mm. practicing psychologists mm. to attend to their population. Right. Are we able to do that as adequately as we should be in South Africa? Well, there's two levels to answer that. Um, at, but I think at the superficial level, from a numbers point of view, as you've correctly cited, um, we do not have the adequate number of um, psychologists who are there, who should be there and, and able to attend to people generally as a country, but even more so specifically to attend to, as you rightly said, the majority of South Africans who are black um, and poor. And so the resources by far are, are, not, are not close to uh, mm. meeting and serving the needs of South Africa. Mm. And this is across racial lines too, I imagine. I mean, if we talk just broad-based numbers, are there enough psychologists for the population without the race question being introduced? No, I don't think so. If you compare mm. to, to other countries, I don't think so. But um, I think it's important to break it down right. because we would give a false picture if we just take, take it as a global picture. Mm. Uh, because what it means is that even within the insufficient number collectively, Within that, um, the number of people that are actually qualified to deal directly, effectively, and appropriately with the people most in need uh, are by far, uh, you know, lower than should be, mm. uh, and not even close to what it should be. Mm -hmm. And we'll delve into that dynamic in just a moment as well. Yeah. Um, but what would you say is the issue? Is it a structural problem? Is it a lack of political will? Is it just... Mm a lack of interest from mm. people going into the profession. Mm. Um, where are we getting it wrong? Sure. Um, so there's two levels. Um, on the one, it is just that the, the nature of the uh, profession of psychology is such that it is, in a sense, let's say, elitist. And, and, and I'm saying that uh, with due respect to the quality of work and the fact that we work in the deep and dark, mm -hmm. um, you know, recesses of, of human beings. It is a very sensitive, it is holy ground, so to speak. So it is important that people are adequately trained. And uh, so first of all, the resources for training just aren't enough, uh, right. particularly as you go higher into the higher levels of honors and masters, uh, to be able to give the individual attention so that people are able to really uh, be able to get to the deep nuances of understanding what it means to practice psychology. Um, so it is, it is important. It, it reflects, firstly, structural issues as a country that I don't think that we have adequately um, uh, put in given priority to psychological needs and mental health issues right. as a country. And I think the slant is, uh, and my, my colleagues in the medical profession might have a different argument, but the understanding, the primary um, thought that comes to people's mind when we talk about health is physical, medical mm. health. And mm. so a lot more um, resources are being um, put into that side than they are uh, to, the, to the psychological part. Because simply by virtue of the fact that, you know, medical is very palpable, it's, it's so here, it's see, there, you can feel. point right. to where the mm. pain is, but where do you point to psychological issues and therefore we then are put on the back burner of considerations purely from that point of view. Mm. And I guess another difficulty is, you know, the lack of understanding even from people who themselves might be, you know, suffering from mental health and things like that. Yeah. And we find that that sometimes is more prominent um, within African communities because mm. of our understanding of medicine, because of our understanding of these issues, yeah. particularly in a contemporary context. Yeah. Is the profession appreciating how African people might deal with mental health issues or are we lagging behind well, insofar as that is concerned? I think for me that is the deeper issue. Mm. Um, and it's interesting, you know, that we now have a sense of understanding psychology as a Western discipline, which it wasn't mm. originally. So psychology is effectively, even the word psychology comes from Africa. Um, so, but what has happened is that through the social-political dynamics, the history um, of, uh, of the relationships between 
between Africa and the West. Uh, it has now been uh, taken over and the, the black voice, uh, the black perspective was marginalized uh, from the discourse, as it were. And so in the foregrounding of psychology as a Euro-Western um, uh, discipline, um, it has alienated the Africans and hence people do not understand black people, African people do not understand how they fit into mm. the discourse of psychology because we struggle to find ourselves. Even we as professionals struggle to find ourselves when in, in the journey of our training. We have to let go of who we are mm. and embrace something that we are not. Uh, and therefore, we, even as we are being adequately prepared, we, we are flying on borrowed wings, as it were, as opposed mm. to a psychology that has prepared us to serve the people of our country and our uh, continent of Africa. Mm. It is not psychology, the discipline is not geared towards serving the people of Africa. It's quite phenomenal. I mean, take us deep into, you know, that experience. I mean, we understand that there's only about 30% of psychologists in the country are black. I mean, yes. It's a broad-based number, yeah. uh, which means the burden, um, insofar at least as... as demographics are concerned, yeah. it's much larger, yes. so to speak. Yeah. Um, you know, what are some of the struggles that you as black psychologists in particular have to contend with, not only on a daily basis, but you know, even once considering the bigger picture of what psychology looks like in the country? Mm. So first of all, it is to get a black voice. And I think the, the challenge is also from within the, the profession to mm. start with, in that many of us, myself included, um, did not actually in the course of our training, even did have an insight into black psychology, African-centered psychology at all. Wow. So we were taught from the beginning, the ancestors of psychology are Freud and so on and all the names I don't care to mention. Uh, but those are the people that were etched into our psyche as, as training uh, psychologists. And so um, many of us don't even know that there is black psychology, there is African-centered psychology. So even as we go into that space, we ourselves are using a lens that is not ideally suited to understanding the people that we are supposed to be serving. Mm. You know? yeah. so, and even the, so that what I'm suggesting is that even if we look at the number of 30% and strive to say, okay, we need to look at transformation from a representational point of view, what are we bringing them into yeah. is the question yeah. that we should yeah. be debating yeah. rather all than just bringing the numbers and upping the numbers because all we are doing is to bring them to drink from the same poison chalice, chalice and, and therefore they, are, they will still not be adequately equipped to serve the people that they are meant to serve. Which sounds to me that the calls need to sort of morph into uh, directing for a decolonial type of Absolutely. agenda, right? Absolutely. Um, which is... Phenomenal, because that's actually nothing new. I mean, the discourse uh, around decolonization yes. has, yes, been largely, at least recently, centered in uh, institutions of higher learning. But yes. it almost appears that the profession of psychology wasn't necessarily being considered during that yeah. time. Um, why do you think that is? I mean, how did we leave behind it is you know, because, such a central issue? Yeah, it is because, you know, when you, when you, it's as if we are forced to look through someone else's lens right. of spectacles and to the point where you have now, we have all, including the white European perspective itself, the whole notion of universality is what has been drummed into us, that these principles, these theories, these theorists themselves are purporting to, you know, uh, uh, bring uh, forward um, universal principles and theories and of, of being human. Mm. And that's not the truth at all. There, there are fundamental differences between what it means from a Western point of view and what it means to be human from a, uh, an African point of view. Mm. And so our starting point is contaminated. So everything that then what develops follows, on yeah. top of that is, is actually, uh, you know, Mm. inappropriate. Mm. So, so that's where we need to begin. So when we start talking about decolonization, people look at you and say, but what are we decolonizing? You know, and psychology. if I look at my journey, and I mean, if we're talking about becoming psychologists, we are talking about an eight, nine year, uh, you know, journey. Nowhere did we ever talk about people like Franz Fanon. Nowhere, nowhere. Wow. I only discovered that name after I qualified and I'm sort of certified to go out there and serve the people of South Africa and the people of Africa. What is that about? Mm. So help us understand what African psychology might even look like, what it might sound like. You know, what are some of the things we should be looking out for? You mentioned Franz Fanon. I imagine yeah. the likes of Steve Biko, who also ironically, yeah. I don't think are at first glance regarded as voices in yeah. the psychology the space. We've seen them very much as, you know, uh, political figures yes. who are in 
involved in social yeah. politics yes. more than anything else. Yeah. But he so, uses very much dominantly the psychological register, right. you know, to articulate the politics of what Africa should look like mm. and what being African should look like. And I think the starting point um, is to recognize that even black psychology itself, starting in the U.S. as a formalized discipline in the 60s, the, there has been a lot of work that has been done from that point of view. And it itself is very much in its developmental st state but there's already a lot of uh, discourse that we should have been engaging with. And it talks about even evolutions in the understanding of psychology. So it is a very rigorous scientific approach mm. to uh, uh, psychology of black people. But fundamentally, the starting point simply says, just because you are black doesn't mean that you're practicing African psychology. Let's just understand that. By virtue of our color, it doesn't mean we're practicing. Simply because the register from which we uh, you know, enter the space right is not our own. Mm. So we are wearing uh, borrowed robes even as we enter the discourse. So African psychology says, let's start with what it means to be African. Because it is certainly, uh, and there's a psychology of, of, uh, of Africans that simply says, Africans are not derivatives of white people. We are our own distinct people. And therefore, we had a psychology before it becomes a discipline. We had a psychology simply because we have a psyche right. as a people. Mm. And we have a way of being and worldviews and understanding of ourselves and how the world works. And therefore, however we articulated it, it may not necessarily articulate with what Western psychology says it should be, but that doesn't mean that it does not exist. And so the, the decolonization journey is about recognizing that first of all, and saying, how do we then create space for multiple voices? And it is not about saying, let's throw everything out, that's uh, Euro-American psychology, but it is about saying, let us recognize that we have been fed half the cake and being fooled into believing that's the cake in its totality. That mm. is not true. I want to speak about language too, because that's a big part of, I guess, how we come to understand ourselves as African. Yes. And we'll be able to share about what we've learned about, you know, the psychology of being an African person. Yeah. Uh, but I guess part of your response can also reflect on what needs to be done, you know, um, systematically speaking, on an interpersonal level, you know, um, what kind of interventions need to take place to get us to the place that you've described? Sure, th there's a lot that needs to be done, um, Ayanda. And if you start with, with the issue of language, so part of the challenge is, you know, having a language that could be representative uh, mm -hmm. for Africa. And this is an issue that we're discussing of which language would that be, because yeah. we have a lot of languages. Exactly. However, in our diversity, there are fundamental principles that even if we would learn them, say, for example, in English, um, we, we are able to translate what it means for you and I. Mm. Um, without, th there is a knowingness that happens between us uh, when we come from the right frame of understanding of, of who we are, what issues we are dealing with, and therefore we are able to articulate amongst ourselves and to ourselves uh, the issues that we are talking about. Um, and th that, that needs to be accommodated in the curriculum um, that, we are, that we are teaching uh, and learning in, in our in, uh, institutions of, of higher education. Right. So that it then needs to dovetail to the experiences of people and it needs to dovetail and speak to people the challenges that people from the ground are presenting so that we should be clear when you are talking about psychology from a Western point of view and be able to articulate that and equally be able to say this is where I'm at now. And the two can coexist, uh, not that we force one into sure, the other. Sure, sure. Certainly a conversation that we can have uh, until the cows come home, so to speak, in an African sense. To. But uh, certainly do, certainly do. So I'm hoping we'll be able to carry it on uh, at a different time. But for now, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for coming through. Uh, Jose Gianni is a clinical psychologist, helping us understand the dynamics of being a black psychologist in a country where.